Family and friends, welcome to episode 9, the second installment in the series of emotions. Today we talk about anger and my views on controlling it. As we gradually age, we slowly begin to lose patience for life's seemingly rhetorical and mundane instances. As a result, our tolerance ability becomes more sensitive than in our youth. As we age, ironically, we, we have more knowledge and wisdom and know better than to let our anger get the best of us. Yet it is the one thing for me that challenges my controllability. I can imagine the challenge it poses for others. Speak to anyone that knows me and they will tell you I am as cool-headed as anyone can be. However, I know the dark realities of me losing my cool. Once I cross that I had enough threshold, there's very little that can be done to stop it. Like an avalanche, once it gets going, it can only end with a big crash and total devastation. Although I'm not proud of it, I can literally count on one hand how many times I've gotten that angry. By nature, I am a happy person. I see the good in everything. So I am typically easygoing. I avoid conflict whenever possible, and when I can't, I am constantly analyzing a way to de-escalate. I do this because I know my potential to be angry, and I know the consequences will never be something I will be proud of. Anger, in my experience, always leads to resentment. Never a good feeling. The why we get angry is never as important as the consequences of getting angry. Most would disagree with this, however, if you look at any issue from a, a logical perspective like I do, you quickly realize that it's all temporary. Everything is temporary, so what's important here? The thing you got angry about or the consequences of being angry? Well, logically speaking, you can never control either. However, you can control how you respond to any circumstance you find yourself in. In that moment, you have the power to maintain your best behavior. The challenge with anger is slowing down just long enough to realize that you're about to lose control. Remember, we are talking about stopping an avalanche here, and everyone knows you can't stop an avalanche. However, you can avoid the big one. There are steps to ensuring this by purposely setting off smaller avalanches, or you can simply remove yourself from the environment altogether. Brilliant, isn't it? Removing yourself from the thing that makes you angry. What a list of endless possibilities that could be. However, our human instincts, intuition, judgmental characteristics, insecurities, and ironically, our very choices invites anger every opportunity it gets. One of the most famous classical composers of all time, Mr. Ludwig van Beethoven, was as angry of an individual as anyone could be. A very rough childhood with illness and deaths in the family, his deafness and abusive alcoholic father was more than enough to make him resent life. However, like all the great artists before and after his legacy, he was able to channel that energy of anger into his music. And today, a couple of hundred years later, we now enjoy some of the most expressive and intricate masterpieces of all time. The goal here, just like any other emotion, is not in avoiding getting angry. It is, however, about managing the emotion to where its effect is nothing more than a point of mental notation, unconscious redirect of energy. Bruce Lee once said, be like water, be formless, shapeless. When you put water in a cup, it becomes the cup. When you put water in a bottle, it becomes the bottle. When you put it in the teapot, it becomes the teapot. He says, water can flow or it can crash. One of the greatest forces of nature, so humbling, one of his best advices is to be like water. Most would say he was a fighting philosopher. However, I believe his philosophy was about not fighting at all. 
Very effective anger management, if you ask me. So getting angry is your thing. You get angry for just about the smallest thing, just about everything and everyone annoys you to the point that you, you believe you have a problem. Well, you're probably right. There are many emotion unstable scenarios for the human psyche. The common cause for the around the clock anger, I would say, would have to be that of low self-esteem, generally accompanied with some form of depressive state of mind. And this all stems from way back in your childhood memories and experiences. Those who are, for lack of a better term, always grumpy, has almost always suffered great mental anguish at a very young age. For these folks, time only aggravates their condition because generally they cannot let go of their past. It is for them a huge hurdle to overcome as they have already pre-programmed -pre -pre their brains to believe that this is how their lives will forever be. And they avoid the past like a plague. The only way to overcome this is to address the issue head on. A huge fear for anyone with this problem, which requires loads of understanding and support by surrounding family and friends. Like old Ebenezer Scrooge in the Christmas Carol, who only recognized his flaw by revisiting his past, acknowledging his present situation and aspiring for a bright and happy future together with being overwhelmingly loved by those he socialized with in every aspect of his life, despite his anger demeanor. In his case, it took a village and three significant spirits to change him for the better. Even though this story is fictional, family and friends, it is a prime example on the lengths that can be taken to manage anger. Anger itself comes in many forms, sometimes justifiably so, it was anger that led Abraham Lincoln to put into law the Emancipation Proclamation. It was anger that inspired Mahatma Gandhi to protest for his people. Again, it was anger that drove a young Martin Luther King Jr. to stand up for civil rights. And it was anger that caused Jesus Christ to upheave the Temple of Jerusalem prior to his, to his death. The emotion has historically been in many positive ways, the genesis of change and life-altering circumstances, and also the reason behind many unspeakable atrocities. Therefore, we must not label it anything more than it is, a tool of progress, a much-needed sentiment for disgust, injustice, and oppression. With that said, family and friends, anger like fear is inevitable. I pray you can find reconciliation with yours, whatever it may be. Use it for progress while controlling its wrath. Develop a sense of awareness that you may see it before it strikes. Stay tuned for my next episode on emotions as I dive into the depths of sadness. Until then, as always, may you have a meaningful and purposeful week. God bless.